notes last night. I, I, God woke me up at 1.30. He always does that. And it's like, okay, I want you to say this, this, and this. And then I forget everything. So that's why I write it down because I know that I want to remember. But uh, how many know, just to, before I go into that, how many know the anointing brings supernatural favor? Now, yes. you guys got to get a hold of that. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean just for the house, the pulpit, the pastors. It means for the, like everybody. Supernatural favor comes upon the house. And if you're sitting in here, there's a reason why you're sitting in here. Listen, 18 years, I know this couple, uh, uh, you know, the ministry has been going on, I think, for 18 years. The, 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 yes, this particular church. Right, so 18 years. Can you imagine? Honey, you want to sit back down? I, I won't be that long. Um, but they've been laboring, you know, and working in this region called Hamilton for 18 years. And you guys are blessed to be part of this work here. And, uh, and I believe, I, I heard the Lord say, uh, they've been laboring and working with the Holy Ghost, and he will bring favor on his wings. So it's like, be prepared. Be prepared, because it's, it's just suddenly... You saw what happened this morning? It's just a suddenly, and that's how God works. He never, he doesn't plan it. He doesn't wait for you to be in the right mind and the right, you know, attitude, the right, uh, you know, environment. He just flows wherever he wants to flow. If, he, if you invite him in, he'll come. So this is a place we need to keep inviting him in. Amen? Because he will show up. And uh, I love this place because it's a one-stop shop. That's what I, I call it, a one-stop shop, the hub. It's got everything in this building. This is a blessed place. This, it's even got birds in the house. Can you imagine? My God. So anyways, um, but I, I wanted to say that goodness, you know, goodness and mercy, I look at goodness and mercy like, like bookends and the Holy Spirit in the middle. They're like bookends. And I, I see Pastor Patty and... Pastor Alex, like bookends in this place with the Holy Ghost in the middle. And, and I just got that last night. I thought, wow, I love that. But goodness and mercy, right, follows, them, follows you all the days of your life. Because goodness takes on a form. Did you get that? Goodness takes on a form. And so we gotta, we gotta look at, you know, examine your environment, know where you are. I'm not gonna start teaching now, Tom's gonna come up and do that, but I just feel that, you know, um, you know, when the founder, Dr. Russ, came to Canada, he came over, you know, 23 years ago, or 24 years, almost 25 years ago, I think it is. Anyways, he just heard a call, and thank God for that call, and thank God that he, you know, found the right people to link up. He calls us the tribe of hungry because we, we are walking this thing out because God already ordained it from the foundation of the world. He didn't plan this now. He didn't plan the transformation now. He didn't plan for these two to be taken over. He planned it from the beginning. Yes. So that means there's a plan. And when God puts in a plan, he puts the hand with it. This is the hand that's organizing and structuring, but you guys are the body that comes together and work it all out. So you're very important to this place. The plan required the hand. But I remember Kenneth Copeland said, because you know we want to all be in the will of the Father. And so I believe this is the will of the Father here at the hub in the center of Hamilton. But Kenneth Copeland said one thing. He said, the will of God the will of God is a wealthy place. Isn't that beautiful? He said that. And it just struck with me and it stayed with me for years and years and years. And I thought, because we're all thinking wealthy, wealthy. But you see, it's the will that's the most wealthiest thing you'll ever have in your life. And he even, he even came down on the altar to confirm that. So do you see the will of the Father? And, and so are you coming up here beside me? That's, this is just a... a, a, a yeah. God's doing something. He feels comfortable to be on the altar. Yep. So the Transformation Center has taken the path that God has prepared for it. And it's ordained of God. And I just wanted to say you two are ordained of God. You're wonderful bookends in the kingdom of God. And I just pray that God continues to unify this and I want to come back and I want to see even more. I, listen, you could just dig a hole, you could just dig a, a, a big hole, hole in this brick and expand the building because get ready because God wants to do that. Amen? Anyways, honey, and, and you know what? I had a vision that I knew when you were going to come up here. I saw a gavel and I saw a gavel come down psh, on the sacred desk. So be prepared. If you got a notebook, 
take your notes because I know that this is a moment, like she said, a moment, a Kairos moment, but it's a moment of faith. You need to take this word, you need to digest it, you need, listen, we're doing crazy things that we never expected to do out in Barrie that God said, and he, you know, this, this bird's freaking me out right now. Anyways, um, I, I just I like, no, because I'm just like astounded of what he's, anyways. Um, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but bless you. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're gonna, he takes us to places we don't know where we're going, but just heed to the Spirit and let him take you. Those that are led by the Spirit are the sons and daughters of yes. God. Amen? And I got one here. You know, somebody says, what's, we have a, a beautiful dog at home, and, and you say, what's better than one dog? Well, two dogs. Hallelujah. We got two dogs at home. You learn a lot. You learn a lot about the flesh doesn't want to uh, be obedient. You learn about jealousy. There's a lot of jealous spirits going on with those things, I tell you. But, but we're, we're, we're no strangers to animals being around. So this is, this is normalized. Uh, we've had rabbits in our backyard, skunks. We've had uh, uh, squirrels, uh, birds, deer, you name it. We, we're, and I started preaching to them too. I said, well, if St. Francis can do it, I can do it. I'm Italian heritage Catholic, so it's in our roots. So praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But we thank you, Lord, for your word this morning, Lord. We thank you that your word is spirit and it is life. We thank you, Father, that as we open up your word, Father, let your spirit open our hearts. Let your spirit, Lord God, write the engrafted word of God in our hearts this morning. Let us, as we are in the transformation, be transformed in the name of Jesus. And we thank you. We give you all the praise and the glory and the honor. And if you believe us, say amen. Hallelujah. So we're just going to be like all over. I'm kind of a preacher that flows all over the place. So, so don't get scared if you see pages. You know, some of those preachers terrorize you when they got seven pages, ten pages, because you think you got nine pages to go, eight pages to go. Lunch is, you know, brewing up. Birds are competing with you. Everything's competing. But I'm telling you, you know, glory be to God. Let's see where he wants us to go. But watch this. I, I believe it's in First Thessalonians. If you have your Bible, go with me to the book of First Thessalonians. How many know the Bible says where two or three are gathered together in my name, Jesus said, there I am in the midst. So if Jesus is here in the midst of us, that means we have the supernatural miracle working power come on in our lives. If Jesus is here in our midst, we have everything that we need, come on, that pertains to life. If Jesus is here in our midst, if you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, everyone that had needed of healing were healed. Everyone that, come on, that needed a deliverance were delivered. Everything that they needed from Jesus was there in the midst. So how many of you believe that if Jesus is here in our midst, come on, we have the answers to all things. How many know that if Jesus is here, it doesn't matter what's happening in the world, we can still have perfect peace. Come on, in the name of Jesus. And so I believe it is Maybe it's in first, yeah, first Thessalonians chapter one. Watch what he says here, verse five. He says, look, for our gospel, which is good news. You know, the word gospel means good news. It means to herald good news. And Jesus is the very foundation preaching the gospel. Watch this. He says, came not unto you in word only, but also in power. Come on power and in the Holy Ghost and in much insurance. Come on. So the gospel has power, not just in word only, but the word that is spoken, there's power to back it up, right? And in the Holy Ghost, because he's the one that does the works. And I love what he says, and in much assurance. 
So something tells me that if you can get a hold of something in the word today, you can leave here assured of something. If you have a need, you can be assured that my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. If there's something that you need to do, you feel you can't do it, you can know that my God, through him, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Come on. So if God be for you, who can be against you? And so Holy Ghost, stir something in us today, because I believe there's something that happens when we're privately worshiping God, seeking God, but I believe something happens when we're corporately worshiping God, when we come together, that it's got to transform, it's got to shake us, it's got to shift us. And see, sometimes we just want uh, our circumstances, a temporal light affliction to be shifted, but God wants to shift us from the very foundation. He wants to do what is called a paradigm shift if you know what I mean. He wants to shift the paradigm of our thinking. We have to be shifted. You know, sometimes we think of that, that man that was lame. He was paralyzed and he couldn't get up. But see, we see that in the natural. But how many know that we can still be walking around, living life, looking good, and still be paralyzed? Come on, God wants us to take us out of that place. He wants us to rise, take up our bed and walk. Come on, he wants to rise in us. Come on, wants us to rise, take hold of that word and take up and take, that means take authority over what's been holding you down and walk, start walking. Because the Bible says you are created in Christ unto good works, which God has before ordained that you should walk in them. Come on, that's some good news. So, so there's power. Power here now. Now, now, go with me to the book of First Thessalonians here again. Same, same, uh, same book, chapter two. Watch this, verse thirteen. He says, "For this cause, also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which you heard of us, you received it not as it was the word of man, but as it is in truth." the word of God which also works in you that believe. Okay, it's up there, beautiful. I like this kind of stuff here when it comes up here. It makes it so much easier. But watch this, but still look at your Bible. Because Proverbs 4, 20 to 24 says, My son, attend to my word. Incline thine ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. You've got to keep looking at it. And if we, if we come to the house of God and we're not looking at the word of God, something's going wrong here. Come on. Because the Bible says that we are to attend to the word. So our attention has to be on the word. Because if he's going to work from the inside out, because the kingdom of God works from the inside out, you have to have your attention. Because what you place your attention on will start shifting something on the inside. Attend to my word. Incline thine ear. Because why? Faith comes from hearing, hearing the word of God, right? Incline thine ear to thy saints. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Come on. So you got to wake up. You can't just come to church, come on, and just get the word. you got to have a Monday, Tuesday, you got to start feeding yourself. Wouldn't it be ridiculous if someone comes into your house, starts cooking a meal for you, starts feeding you, come on, when you can do it yourself? How many people had that in your life? Someone comes in your house, cooks for you, clean for you, hallelujah. We haven't seen it yet, but, but glory be to God. You're welcome to come, hallelujah. But my wife, she's a lovely cook, so I don't, that's okay anyways. But it, wouldn't it be weird if you come and she, she's fork, putting the fork and spoon in my mouth. Come on, glory be to God. But watch. And, and so, because the Solomon said, they are life unto those that find them. How many know that even though you remember the word, the devil's not afraid because you can remember the word. The devil's not afraid that if you read the word, He's not afraid of all that. He, does, he doesn't care about that. But it's when you know something, when you know, when it gets up on the inside of you. Jesus didn't say the truth sets you free. He says, when you know, when you know, something happens when you know, that means well, your whole circumstances could be speaking totally opposite, but what's inside of you says, I know that 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 I know, come on, and you got to keep declaring, holding fast your confession of your faith, because when you receive the word, you received it, come on, not as the word coming from men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, and when you receive 
receive it as the word of God. You receive it and you believe it, but the Bible says now it starts effectively working in you. Come on, something starts coming alive in you. And as much as we want to see miracle signs and wonders come on in our midst, that means we got to get a hold of it on the inside first before we get it on the outside. That's why I love the book of, of Mark, uh, Mark 11, 24. He says, what things soever you desire when you pray, you got to believe that you receive them and you're going to have them. So in other words, you got to already have it before you actually see it. Come on, we can stew on that for a while. You got to actually have it before you actually see it. But it takes that shifting. It takes that shifting. So if you go to, watch this, Romans chapter 12. And I thought this is so fitting because we are here in the transformation center. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I still like, I'm still, I'm using a new Bible. I still have to fix it up because in my Bible, I have to find out where it says fast and scratch that out. And where it says eat and be merry, highlight, right? Hallelujah. <laughs> so that way when they say fast, well, sorry, it's not in my Bible. Hallelujah. <laughs> no, glory be to God. Romans chapter 12, verse, oh, there we go. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Next verse, two. And be not conformed, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable, perfect will of God. You know, you think of the movie Transformers. How many watched the movie Transformers? I've done this before in some churches. Some people did. Okay, thank God there's some people that Optimus Prime, you know, we're here. Come on, hallelujah. But, you know, when you think of when, when God, when, when you see what's happening in Hollywood, how many of that God, if, if we don't proclaim the message, God's going to make the rocks to cry out to proclaim the gospel. If we don't preach it, Hollywood will preach it. Come on. Don't get so religious on me that Hollywood can't preach the gospel. Celine Dion sang a song, the, A New Day Has Dawned, Dawn, many years ago, speaking about a son, speaking about the birth of her son. Isn't that talking about Jesus? The son, the son. Watch the words. Transformers. There was a, a, a round many years ago, Transformers, and they did a, a cycle of one, two, three part. And then they redid it again, one, two, three. Now they just released another one that just came out past this summer. But why do we keep hearing the word transform, 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 transform? Because what they do, their, their, their machineries from an outer planet somewhere way beyond, hallelujah, and what happens is that they're able to transform, take on images and shape, shape and shift in different modes. So they transform, because the word transform, watch this word transform, because we're in the transformation center. Watch the word transform. It's a Greek word that means metamorphosis. It means to be changed. You know, changed like from a, a caterpillar to a butterfly, a tadpole to a frog. Uh, the definition, I looked it up, it means uh, to change composition. That's powerful. Change composition. Or to change an outward form. Powerful. Change outward form or the very appearance. So you can literally change your outward. You know when the Bible says that they were, they were glowing with the presence of God? Remember Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration? He was transformed that even his clothes was even glistening with the glory and the presence of God. That's the same word, the Mount of Transfiguration. John G. Lake said it like this, that there's a glory that's inside you. That same glory that was on the Mount is inside you. Just waiting to be released very very powerful that you have that glory that can change it changes your very DNA but you know what happens it starts it starts from your mind it starts from your mind because he says you got to be transformed by the how do you do it by the renewing of your mind renovation now there's another thing if you watch TV shows you know how many watch the renovation shows? 
that people come, you know, how many know it's so big now? It, you know, I'm in the construction industry, and even from the early 2000s, it hasn't been so powerfully uh, impacting our society as it is this day. Everybody, everybody has doing a renovation in their house. Come on, everybody's updating, changing. Come on, right? You know, renovation, renovate, and you watch. And how many know when you watch these shows, it's amazing. They get the best of the best, and so what they do, they, they take a house in an old shape, tear down a lot of parts, come on, and put brand new parts, repaint it, fix it up, and it looks totally brand new, totally different. That when you see the transformation that happens to it, you're like, wow. But how many know before they actually do the work, they, you know, got the work and do the work, there's also a designer in there. Isn't that amazing? There's a design. The word is the design. 1 Peter 2.24 says, by his stripes you were healed. You were designed to walk in perfect health and perfect wholeness. So what happens when you take that word and you take Exodus 15.26 that says, I am the Lord your healer. When you take the words that he sent his word and healed. When you take the word of Matthew 4.23 that Jesus goes about teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease what happens you start creating a design and that design is kind of like a blueprint because that's what the constructors work with the blueprint even the designers make a kind of a blueprint and once you got that blueprint you start formulating it starts to work and starts coming together but how many know that it takes work to renew your mind it takes work. And that's why we talk about, when we talk about a paradigm shift, because how many know that we always live on automatic pilot, that you don't have to think? How many know that when you drive your car, you're down the road, and you realize you've been driving for five minutes, you're not even paying attention to the road? Come on, how many have been there? Like you've been, you just automatically, you get up, you make breakfast, you, you brush your teeth, you comb your hair, you do it automatic. You realize without that you're so automatic that when your wife changes the toothpaste spot, you go reach for it and it's not there. And you say, why'd you do me like that? Hallelujah, you get a little Southern. Why'd you do me like that? Why you change it? You know, how many know that, you know, we, we changed, uh, after one year in our new home, we changed where we put the towels from one spot to another. And we are so automatic, I'm going back to where it was was in the old place because you know in the morning you get up you're just so automatic that's what we do because we're just recreated that way and and so what happens is we get these uh, dimensions of thinking that's so automatic come on that all of a sudden you start acting on that and even though the new position is over here you start going to the old position how many know that if any man being Christ he's a new creature but we keep living in an old creature and what what happens happens to us if we don't watch out we start hearing the old man being preached and we start acting out the old man but we got to start walking out who we are in Christ rather than our who we are in Adam glory be to God oh that's that that takes this takes precision because it, what you eat what your appetite what you eat you will become come on in the natural you change your diet I think my brother was sharing about the diet you change your diet it changed the physio uh, therapy of your of your muscles, your joints, and everything. And how many know that that even higher higher than the food that we eat that will affect your body is the way you think. That's why Solomon said, "For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he." Because what happens is, you know, I've been doing some studies even on the mind, uh, 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 physics. Uh, uh, um, mind body coherency uh learning about states of homeostasis then your body's in a, a normal state of being and somebody that that more in the medical field might know more so but i'm just learning bits and parts but what they do tell us and uh, uh i've heard from actually dr caroline leaf they said that 90 over 90 plus uh, percent of illnesses come from mind because of but because of stress because what happens is we're living in a stress if we can't pay our bills how many know that you're in stress come on come on we, we know but but what does the word tell us be careful for nothing 
but in everything by prayer and supplications, let your requests be made known to God. The, what does the word tell us? My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. We have a sure word, ladies and gentlemen. We have a sure word. What amazes me, now watch, this will challenge your effective way of thinking, and it's challenged me. We would rather have someone come up here and say, thus says the Lord your God, you're going to have food on your table. You're going to have bread to eat. You know, he's going to take care of, of, of your needs. Don't worry about those bills. And, and, you know, and then so you get a prophetic word and you're like, wow. And then some of you will be really highly, highly educated in this. And you'll bring your phone and you're going to be like, wow, I got on my phone now. Right. Wow. But then we will negate Philippians 419 that says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. See, thank God for the men of God and women of God that can hear it. But the men and women of God, what I've learned throughout the years, can't minister to everybody all place at the all time. But if I hold you up, Philippians 419, come on, that, that's inclusive for everyone in the house that no one is exempt from it. You are under the same covenant. You are under the same promises that my God shall you can walk out of here lacking or wanting nothing because the Bible says the Lord is your shepherd you shall not want come on glory be to God so you got to get bold about it and believe but it takes a shifting and so sometimes we want to we want we want an anointing for miracles but I'm believing for the anointing to shift and change your mind I want what Paul said when he said he was able to turn their eyes from darkness to light from the power of Satan to the power of Almighty God. Because you can go with miracles, come on, into a nation that does not know Jesus. And that might get their attention, maybe for a little bit, because it will hold you for a little bit. Miracles are good. They will hold you for a little bit, but it won't sustain you. What sustains you is true transformation on the inside. I was thinking about Pakistan, and it says that there are 250 million people in Pakistan, and 90% are Muslim. But I believe the gospel has power, come on, to make every knee bow in Pakistan. Come on, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I still believe what the word says. Come on, glory be to God. Let God be true and everything else is a lie. It's amazing how we sang song. What was that song we were singing about all the angels bow before you? And, and come on, give me some more lyrics. And they cry holy. And what else were they saying? Keep going. All creation bows that you are what? The, where's the preeminence of God? That he's holy, that he's in control. What is it that he's, he's, he's like ruling? He, he, he's in control. He's the king of, like he's in control, right? And we hear these songs and then we'll go up and we'll say, we'll echo CNN and saying, well, come on, there's a lot of destruction that's going on in the world. We, we have our CNN in the church, hallelujah, that's going to echo what's going on, glory. But I, I found out I ain't going to never let echo with what's what I see. I've been determined that if I'm going to walk the walk of faith, I'm going to call those things which be not as though they were. I'm going to say what God says rather than what I see. I still believe he makes room, wars to cease. Come on. I still believe he's the... He's the, he's the owner, come on, of the ends of the earth. Come on. I still believe that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall fill the whole earth as the waters cover the sea. I still believe that every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. Something inside me is not willing that any should perish, that all shall be shaved. Not only Israel, but Palestine. Not only, come on, the IDF, come on, armies and the civilians there, but also the Palestinian civilians. I'm for the Jew and the Gentile because there's no other name which men shall be saved. So it doesn't matter who you are, what race, come on, glory be to God, unless you're born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Come on. You must, Jesus said, be born again. And sorry, come on, for our Jewish Israeli brothers and sisters, glory be to God, unless you declare Jesus Christ is Lord, he is the door. He, there is no other way. There is no back door. You can't use the lineage of Abraham. We can use it, but you can't use it you got to confess that he is Lord because if they can get in some other door, then they don't need the cross. Come on. Just because they're born a Jew doesn't mean that they get a, a pass. I used to think because we were Italian and Catholics, we had a pass. And we used to pay our way sometimes. We used to flow 50, 100, and, and we used to get forgiven for sins all the time. I would bypass 
you know, the Hail Marys and the Our Fathers, because all I did was told the priest, here's a hundred bucks, hallelujah, glory be to God. I, I confessed my sins, my wrongs, and sometimes I, I had to add a little bit too, because to make it look, you know, because, you know, we, we, back in the days, you had to be cool with the guys, and yeah, I stole the candy bar, stuff like, you know, you didn't do stuff, so many things, but you got to make it look good, right? You gave the priest a hundred bucks, hallelujah, and you were out of there. Your sins were forgiven. Wasn't that amazing back then? It was so good. Light a candle. We would light a candle and you would do even more holy. Hallelujah. It's, it's amazing. Some of the things that we would do, but, but it's just, so, it's just powerful. Amazing. But come on, it's the transformation of the mind. Now, the power of the word comes. The gospel has power to change our mind, to renew our mind. Oh, Lord Jesus. Where could we go with here? Because I got so many things here that I want to show you. A couple things. I know we're racing for time. But watch this. Go with me to the book of Acts. We're going to focus on the new creature. Come on, people of God. We got to realize how many people are in Christ. Come on. How many receive Jesus as Lord and Savior? So the Bible says you're a new creature. Old things passed away. Behold, all things become new. Come on. Glory be to God. And if you're new, that means you're married to Jesus. And, and stop bringing the devil to bed with Jesus. There's another sacred cow. Sorry, how, I'm sorry for touching some sacred stones over here because my Bible says when you go into the promised land, you see idols. Sometimes the devil, some people can't even get the devil out of their conversation. And, you know, right next door to where we live, uh, the gentleman, he loves Halloween and he's putting up this big thing, all these monsters out there and, 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 and a little uh, scare, scare booth to go through. And, and so sometimes she, she said to me, oh, you know, you know, why? Why here? I said, well, hold on, wait a second. The devil trying to put a horror house beside me, and I'm over here, hallelujah, praise the Lord, right? And so instead of saying, why did we come here where the devil is, the devil should say, why are the God people over here where we are, hallelujah, glory be to God. So they ain't going to mess us, we're going to mess them, glory be to God. So we just pray the life, pray blessing, pray glory, whatever they meant for evil, thank you Lord, you turn around for good, because greater is God, come on, and the kingdom of God than he that is in the world. I ain't going to let that glory be to God, say, you know. There's a lot more I could also say, but you know, sometimes it's a sacredness, and I'm like, glory be to God. we got to worship God. When you come into the Holy of Holies, yeah, I'm telling you, there's, there's no realm of the demonic in the Holy of Holies. If you're in the place of the Holy of Holies, how can there be a devil in that place? That's just you and God. Come on. Now, I know we have to resist the devil. I know these thoughts come and stuff like that, but you cast down these imaginations. That's where you start shifting from the inside out. And I wish I could give you so much with the word because the Bible says, watch this, you're a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. You're a peculiar people. The Bible says that you're blessed with every spiritual blessing. The Bible says that you've been predestined, conformed to the image of his son. The Bible says that you were chosen in Jesus before the very foundation of the word. Watch this. The Bible says that you are washed. First Corinthians 6 11 you are washed justified sanctified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God first Corinthians 1 3 says but of him are you in Christ Jesus who of God has made unto us the wisdom of God the righteousness of God the sanctification of God that you who knew no sin he was made sin for you and I that we might become made the righteousness of God and watch what the righteousness of God means that God who is the ultimate judge in the jury has a law and a law of justice and his law must be fulfilled, the law of justice. So watch this. The, the, the wages of sin is death. So it had to be fulfilled. The wage of sin had to be fulfilled. And I'm telling you what you're seeing, the chaos in the world, whether it's with our nation and every other nation, it's not so much men. It's the sin principle that's working inside them. Glory be to God. That's what it is. That's what we're wrestling against. It's sin. Take away sin. Abolish the 
very power of sin, glory be to God, you won't have these things because when the righteous are in authority, the nations rejoice, glory be to God. And so once you take away that sin, how many of us are going to actually believe that Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world? That's why Matthew one twenty one says, you're going to bring forth a son. You're going to call his name Jesus. He's going to save his people from the sin. How many of you know that when you become born again, God just not only covers your sin, he eradicates it. Glory be to God. That's why when you read the book of Hebrews, you will find out that Jesus being the prophet, priest, king, the great sacrifice that he was the offering for the sacrifice of sins, that he put away sin. I love it when it says he put away sin. He made it abolished by the sacrifice of himself. We're talking about the very ultimate, perfect, come on, lamb of God that Jesus was. It took perfectness, holiness, come on, to take away the very power of sin. So come on, so now if you're in Christ, you're a new creature. And I love what he says in 1 John, watch this, if you are born of God, the seed of God remains in you, and you cannot sin because you're born of him. Isn't that powerful? But see, we got to get that on the inside. We got to be convicted on the inside where all of a sudden, like, like Paul says, we're not going to have that appetite. The things I don't want to do, I find myself doing. The things I want to do, I can't do. But if you find out that you've been born of God, created in his image and likeness, have his DNA, watch this. Second Peter says that you are partakers of his the very divine nature. And watch this. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision of the flesh. If you clothe yourself in Christ, come on, there's no place for the flesh to move. Where all of a sudden, I find myself so free. The things that we call sin, I don't want to do it because it's not in me. Try and tempt me. It don't work. It don't work. That's how free that you get. And it's so free that I can sit with the guys at work, dead in trespasses and sins, talking their nonsense, and not one ounce that bothers me or offends me. That's how free that you get because we think God, oh, God's offended. He's not offended. Glory. He's got big shoulders. Glory be to God. He's not a weenie, weenie, you know, weenie God. He's a big, big God. He's got big shoulders. But watch this. Watch this. Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. This is so powerful. I want to leave you with two, it, two things in the book of Acts. Okay, I'm, I'm going to press against time, so you guys going to be okay if you give me a couple, four, couple more minutes? Yes. Okay, because I know, I know we're, yeah? Okay, I don't want to get in trouble. Because when lunch comes, there's, there's, there's another spirit working. It's called appetite, and it's a good spirit. That's a good spirit. He's a friendly spirit. Come on, appetite's good. And you can... You can offend somebody, especially an Italian. They put all this food in front of you and say, manja, eat, eat, manja, right? And you don't eat. They're offended, right? Hallelujah. So it's a good, it's a good thing. You got to eat. And it says, manja tut. That means everything. So the plate's like this big, and you're like, oh, Lord Jesus, help me, Holy Ghost. That's when you need the dog to come under the table and start <laughs> eating up there. But watch this, Acts 18. Watch this, verse 24. A certain Jew named Apollos born of Alexandria, an eloquent man, mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. Now watch how powerful this is. He's a mighty in the scripture, a Jew, a certain Jew, eloquent man, mighty in the scriptures. Come on. So that's got to get your attention. Wait a second. Here, here's a man mighty, mighty in the scripture. So he knows the word of God. Come on, and we all have to be, if we're sons and daughters of God, we gotta be mighty in the scriptures. We're gonna grow. Watch this. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, being fervent in spirit, and he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. Hmm. We're in, we're in the 18th uh, chapter. Lots has been transpired in the book of Acts. They've been shaking, come on, and getting people saved with the power of God. Already cities have been saved. Then he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him and expounded him, having the way of God made more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote and exhorting the disciples to receive him, who when he has come helped them much, which had believed through grace. 
So there's a measure of faith, measure of believing. But remember, he's only speaking about the baptism of John, right? He mightily convinced the Jews publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ. Kind of like our Baptist friends, right? Hallelujah. That, come on, we just believe. And I can tell you, I, we, I can't go there about the stories about, about being spirit-filled. But come on, if you, if you have received Jesus as Lord and Savior, there's more. Come on. There's more. But that's all that he knew, Apollos, mighty in the scriptures. But it's amazing that when you go, see the volume of the book, it's written of Jesus. When you read from Genesis to Revelation, all we just need is an, an, a, a revelation of, of who that Jesus is in the book. It's all about him. Sometimes we put ourselves in there, but we've got to put ourselves in Christ in there. But it's all about him. 1,600 years took to write this book. 1,600 years. 66 books, all these authors, come on, that wrote, that's why I can never come say I have a certain message. I don't know. Glory be to God. I just open up the book, start sharing, and there, here we go, right? So watch this. Verse 1, chapter 19, and it came to pass that while Paul, Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples, and he said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much heard as whether there be any Holy Ghost. Because mm. you can't receive anything that you never heard. How can they hear without a preacher? Faith comes from hearing, hearing the word of God. We've not heard whether there be any Holy Spirit. And he said unto them, verse 5, then what were you baptized unto them? And they said unto John's baptism. And then Paul, then said Paul, verily John baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him whom should come after him. But when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul laid his hands on him, upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they spake with tongues, and they prophesied. See, they didn't receive that. They didn't realize that there was another measure to come to them, and they couldn't believe anything that they've never heard. Have you ever heard that he's your provider? Have you ever heard that he's your defender? Have you ever heard that he will fight the battles for you? Come on. Have you ever heard that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper? Have you ever heard that nothing shall separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus? Don't matter what we're going through through our light affliction is but for a moment come on but he makes us more than conquerors through Christ that loves us we're not victims come on we're victors we're not the tail we're the head we're above not beneath if you didn't know that come on if you never heard you didn't know I used to teach about prosperity how God wants to increase you I used to believe and I still believe that he says in Deuteronomy that you would lend to many nations and shall not borrow come on and I used to preach that being head over heels in debt Come on. But I realized that the word of God is truth. And I said, when I'm going to walk the walk of faith, I'm going to start believing. It. I'm going to call those things which be not as though they were. I'm going to hold fast my confession of faith. I'm going to trust in the Lord with all my heart. Lead not to my own understanding, but acknowledge his word in all our ways. And come on, he shall direct our paths. And I said, well, Deuteronomy, you said that we come in the promised land. You're going to give us houses. And you said that we're going to be, come on, the lender, not the borrower. And if you, if you have debt, it's okay. It's not a condemnation about anybody that's in debt, but God wants you to come out. Come on. I'm telling you, if you have debt, your days of debt are coming to an end. Glory be to God in the name of Jesus, that I believe that you are the head, come on, not the tail, that you are above and not beneath, that you shall lend to many nations and you shall not borrow. But guess what happened? I kept holding fast the confession of faith. Get holding back the confession of faith. You know what happened to us? We're the head, come on. Now we are landlords. We own the house, come on. And now we lend and we do not borrow. Oh, glory be to God. Because the word of God, he watches over his word to perform it. And then I have many people that came out of our church that we had for 16 years. People coming even to this day testifying that their houses are paid in full. Come on. That all their properties are paid in full. Glory be to God. Because the word works. Even when I had somebody come against me bro, preaching about that God wants you to be blessed and come on and succeed. He will happen. What happened? God turned it around for him and blessed.
bless them anyways. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So I'm telling you, that's the goodness of God. But I want to give you one more last anchor of hope, and we're going to pray and loose the Holy Ghost on you. But watch this, because this is powerful. you got to use the word, because the word is given to us as testimony. When you hear the woman of the issue of blood, she pressed through the crowd. She realized, if I just might get hold of the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. That was written for us to know that if we can press through, we can lay hold of what God's got for us. If we can just believe, all things are possible. He that works miracles among you and ministers the Spirit, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? It's what you hear. So if you can hear and believe it, come on, it's for you. Now, this is so powerful. I want you to see power that you, come on, this is going to, this will freak this. If you never heard this, this will blow your mind, hallelujah, and rightfully so. Let me find it over here in book of Acts. Watch this. Chapter 9. Glory be to God, Jesus. Verse 36. Watch this. This is so good. And I want you to get your, your expectancies up. I'm going to give you a blueprint. I'm going to show you something. I'm gonna, how many of you, just, just to say offhand, how many of you have been faithful unto God? Come on, I'm sure you have, in the best of your ability. How many have been sowing and sowing and sowing unto God? You've been praying. Come on. You've been doing good works. Under, you've been faithful unto God. Come on. How many know, how many have been, you know, you know that you've been pursuing after God? How many of you know that the Bible says he's not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love? Come on. He's not unrighteous. And just like you're keeping record, he keeps record. He don't need a computer, laptop, tablet. Come on. He's got his own mind. Everything is recorded. How many know that he's watching your steps? He knows even the numbers of our hair. He's engraved you in the very palm of your hands. He orders your steps. And watch this. He's so close with you, he'll never leave you nor forsake you, and he's with you always. And, and, he, and he so wants to be so sure that, that he's he's for you that, that he's made you his living temple and takes up residence with you. That wherever you walk he's walking. That you are the temple of the living God. You're the carriers of the very kingdom the glory and the very majesty of God. The devil don't want you to know that come on. He don't want you to know because if you know that come on all you have to do is sit back and let God loose come on and come on nothing shall be impossible. Glory be to God. You can stand even in the midst of the storms. We can stand in the midst of war. I'm telling you, there's a sons and daughters to be loosed in creation that will stand in the midst of storms being untouched. Come on, unhurt. Don't believe it? Look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Went in the fiery furnace. So you don't tell me a scud missile is going to blow you up when you got the Holy Ghost inside you. I believe the scud missiles, come on, if they have the iron dome that can push back these things, you have greater than the iron dome. You have the Holy Ghost inside you. Come on. And he will destroy. The Bible says he will destroy anything that comes against you. And he's fierce. Come on. He's the Lord, strong, mighty in battle. He's the king of glory. Now watch this. You, I'm talking, I know you guys have been faithful. And even sometimes we missed it. Come on. Sometimes we haven't been as faithful as we ought to. We've done the best. So I'm, I'm, I want you all to be encouraged when you read this. Because I'm telling you, I know that you all have that measure of pursuing after God. Come on. Some of us been or smaller, but it doesn't matter. As long as you have that, he's watching you. He's, you got you. That's your faith moving. He's watching you. He's recording. Come on. And the Bible says, watch this. He's not mocked. If you sow, you're going to reap. Come on. That's in every round. More than just money. Come on. But every round, what you sow, you sow prayers for salvation for your family. You're going to get your family saved. You sow prayers for healing. You're going to be healed. Come on. You sow prayers for your church. Come on. They're taking care of the church. He's going to take care of your house. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. God cannot be mocked in this. And watch this. Nothing can stop God from giving you your harvest. There is nothing that can stop God from giving you your harvest. And as long as you stay around Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled people like your pastors and so much, come on, you got to stay around Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled people because there'll be the watchmen that God 
correct because God will use men. Just like Cornelius, he sent the angels. Cornelius, the angel couldn't preach, but he had to go to Peter. It, we are the preachers. Come on. Sons and daughters are the preachers, and he's going to use sons and daughters. So stay connected to your church. Stay connected to the prayer warriors. Stay connected to them that are around you because the harvest, I'm telling you, every harvest that's been aborted is coming back alive. Come on. In the name of Jesus, you are receive the harvest. And watch this. It's going to happen super fast. Come on. It's going to happen, come on, so fast that you're going to be amazed. You're going to be like the Bible says, the plowman overtaking the reaper. And, and, and it might be look like so impossible that it looks like, how can this be? Like Mary, we might be saying, how can this be? But don't worry. Don't look for a man. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you, overtake you, come on, and do this. But watch this. This is so good. I cannot close unless we get this. 36. Now watch this. Now, there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which interpreted by, was called Dorca. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. Good works. Come on. I mean, you people are full of good works. Come on. You've been after God. You got good works. You're just like her. Full of good works. And alms deeds. Now it came to pass in those days she was sick and she died, whom when they washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. So she died. But hold on. Back of the verse, she was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. She was full of good works. Come on. She was a woman, she was a woman fearing God. In other words, she feared God, kept the commandments, kept what she was able to do. She was always after God. But watch this, she died. Now, some of us have been in bad circumstances before, but how many know that death is a bad circumstance? Hallelujah. Come on, that's, a, that's like, that's a dead thing right there. But, but how, how many know that God is not mocked? Come on. If you sow, you're going to reap. Come on. If you sow something, he promised that you're going to reap. Come on. Now, all of a sudden, you're talking, not talking about that, that, that all of a sudden the debtors came and now you're in debt. Not that you've been you diagnosed and you're stuck with this sickness. Come on. You, you, this is dead. This is absolute dead. And then they washed her. They put her in upper chamber for as much as Lydia was near to Joppa. Verse 38, the disciples had heard. And when Peter was there, they said unto him, they sent two men uh, desiring that he would come and not delay his coming to them. Because remember, God is not mocked. If you're sowing, then Peter arose, went with them. When he was come, they brought him up into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him, weeping, showing the coats and the garments which Dorcas has made while she was with them. She, was, she still needed a harvest. Come on, people. Come on. You need, you're getting to get your harvest. But Peter was with them all, put them forth all out. He went, nailed down, and prayed, turning to the body. Look what he says. Tabitha, arise. You get that? Come on. Some of you got to start getting it. Well, look what happened. She opened up her eyes when she saw Peter, and she sat up. He said, Tabitha, arise. She was full of good works. Come on. She was ready for her harvest. Come on. And she had the most horrific thing that would come. Come on. We have trials and tribulations. Come on. We have temptations, trials, and tests. Come on. That we're to count it all joy. She couldn't count it all joy. She was dead. But God is not mocked. She was going to receive what she sowed. She was a giver. Come on. She was a worker for the kingdom of God. She had a harvest come on, that God had to fulfill because he watches over his word and not even death itself could stop it. He used Peter, come on. He used Peter, glory be to God. And Peter says, get up because your harvest is coming. I'm telling you today, get up, come on, on the inside of you. Shake your feet off the dust on the inside of you. I'm telling you, it's harvest day, not only in the natural, but in the spirit. And the Bible says that the whole city, come on, the whole city believed in Joppa. The whole city heard and believed. There's harvest to come upon you. I, I believe there's so much harvest coming upon you that the whole city, come on, your family, your friends are going to see the goodness of God in the land of the living.